Hola, Bisiu, si dame. Hello, golden stars. It's been a long week, I know. You may have heard of different things, but in all things, we learn to give thanks. Which, coincidentally, links to what we're learning about today. We will be learning about courage. Mm. Heard that before, I guess. So what do you think courage means? Absence of fear? Being bold? Being brave? Okay, I can take all of those guesses. But courage doesn't entirely mean absence of fear. It means going through in spite of being afraid. You see, God never promised us that we're not going to face any troubles as Christians. All he said was that when we walk through the fire, he would be with us. When we walk through and pass through water, he is there with us. Yeah. So it means that um, situations, circumstances, sad events are bound to, bound to happen. Um, situations that make us afraid are bound to happen. But what do you do? when things are not working the way they should. No, you don't give up. No, you don't cower in shame or fear. Because the scripture says that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of sound mind. It means that when you are afraid, fear isn't from God, but when you're afraid, God says he is giving you power. Power to confess and stay in prayer with him. He is giving you a sound mind so that you're not paranoid. He's saying that, have courage. Courage doesn't mean um, praying and hoping things work out the way you want them to, but praying and hoping it works out just the way God wants to. So it means having peace of mind and saying, you know what, God, let it be according to your word. So, before I introduce you to today's clip, talking to you about courage, I want to drop today's memory verse, and it's taken from James 5, 16b. It says that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous makes tremendous power available. Did you hear that? Effectual, fervent, consistent, continuous prayer. It makes Tremendous power. You know the power we talked about, about God not giving us the spirit of fear? Mm -hmm. That power, it makes it available to face our situations for, and our situations need to change. So um, I want you to sit back and relax and enjoy this beautiful and funny episode. Cheers. Alyssa, dear, as acting captain of Connect HQ since Ray is gone... Temporarily suspended. <laughs> That's right, since Ray is suspended, I'd like to make a few changes. Write these down. Number one, no more of this Lynx nonsense. From now on, we answer questions to the best of our knowledge. So, <laughs> we won't be needing this. Feel free to make that a coffee table or something, which brings me to number two. I require a steady stream of coffee in order to function properly. I'll talk to the foodies first. Uh, not so fast. Number three, groups are a distraction. From now on, all communication between groups, including yours, go through me. Read that back to me. Yes, Miss Whipple. Let's see. Uh, it. Please, call me the whip. All my friends do. Okay. Let's see, I have no links, more coffee, no talking to groups. I admire your efficiency. Let's keep things short and sweet, like me. Hey, you're so sweet, you're giving me a tummy ache. Mm, that's just the sugar. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen.
My name is Dot, and this is how we completed Operation Powerful Prayer. Does anyone have a switchblade? Of course not. Why would you need something like that? I want to carve a notch in the wall for every day that Captain Ray is gone. We have no idea how long Captain Ray will be suspended, but in the meantime, we still have a job to do. I am so hungry. Me too. What? Hmm. You only have this one grape. You want to split it with me? Look at us! Carving up the walls, splitting old grapes. We can't live like this! I know it's tough, but we can still work hard and pray for Ray. Hang in there. And Dot, no carving on those walls. I have been praying, but nothing is changing. Maybe we're not praying hard enough. Or maybe. We need the pros of prayer. The quiet time group must have a direct line to God. They are prayer warriors. Hey guys, she's looking for the both of you. How can we send a prayer request to quiet time without contacting the whip? <laughs> He's right, nothing gets in or out without her knowing. Come on. Remember that verse that Ray taught us a few weeks ago? From the book of James. Yeah, it was like this. James 5.16. James 5.16. The prayer of a godly person. The prayer of a godly person. Is powerful. Is powerful. It makes things happen. It makes things happen. The quiet time group is full of powerful prayers. We'll find a way to get our request to them, and then Ray will return, and we will have to deal with it! Someone yelling in here? No, ma'am. We were just splitting a tasty grape. Well, enjoy this lounge while it lasts. I'm thinking of turning this into a storage closet. Harper, dear, run to the foodies and grab my coffee. But no, I thought I I approve it. Nick and Dot, if you're not busy, I'd like you to memorize my article on efficiency that I wrote for the Connect Journal last year. It's only 28 pages long. 28 pages? Memorized? Just put little motions to it. Isn't that what you'd like to do? Harper, coffee. Dot, work on a plan. Let's meet in the observatory at 1,500 hours. That's not a time, silly. It's a fancy way of saying 3 o'clock. Then just say 3 o'clock. All right, guys, watch us in. Operation Powerful Prayer is on. Are you in here? Yup. And Dot has a plan. Mm -hmm. It involves motorcycles, fake IDs, and a lock picky monkey we call Jimbo. For budget reasons, I think we should go with plan B. Okay. Plan B, the whip always eats dinner at exactly the same time. I'm going to distract her in the lounge while you and Nick hack into the main communication system and get our prayer request to the quiet time group. It'll never work. She put a password on the main communication system. I'm way ahead of you. Do you have any pets? Nope. Any hobbies? My job is my hobby. What's your favorite movie? A short one. Boy, you're all business, aren't you? There's only one way to get ahead, and that is by being serious. So her password is either serious business or serious business. What if this doesn't work and we get caught? We have two options when things around us aren't going so hot. We can get distracted by the bad stuff around us, or we can have courage, keep faith, and pray for God to rescue us. He's right. We have to try. Watch us in, everyone. Three, two, one. Operation, Operation Powerful, Powerful Prayer. Prayer. Wow, her password really is serious business. Let's get our request to the Quiet Time Group and not look at anything else. Hey, look, there's a new song from the Beat Doctors. Do you think she was gonna share it with us? Who knows? Let's check it out. We don't have time for that. When Dot is creating a distraction, we have all the time in the world. So I said to the museum security guard, listen, if you don't want me touching these dinosaurs, you need to post a sign. And he's like, there are signs everywhere. And I'm like, oh. You're right. Let's watch it. 
Genesis is 66 picks mixed up into one The book's about God, who he is and what he's done It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside It's alive, a prize to hide in your heart and in your mind Old Testaments are set up for the big event When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement It's history, his story, whose story, God's story Let it blow up all the pages, let this show go live Let his word explode from this video into your life This is the story of how courageous prayers of the prophet Elijah led the people back to God Elijah had the courage to pray some pretty crazy prayers Because Elijah believed God would keep his promises God sent the king away I should have been afraid, but took a stand anyway. God made a promise to him. Elijah did believe it, and he knew he would see it. God said, I'll make, make it rain. rain. Elijah had the courage to pray, so Elijah saw God that day. Jump back three years ago, Elijah walked up to King Ahab's throne. Elijah's words were bold. He said, it's not going to rain till I say so. So the land got crusty and dry. But God sent Elijah fruit from the sky. King Ahab tried to track him down, but Elijah was nowhere to be found. When three years rolled around, God sent Elijah back to old Ahab's town. You come to bring trouble now? I challenge y'all to a big showdown. Ahab and Queen Jezebel and the wicked priests of the false god Baal and all the people of Israel met Elijah on top of Mount Carmel. God sent the king away. Elijah should have been afraid, but took a stand anyway. God made a promise to him. Elijah did to believe it, and he knew he would see it. God said, I'll make it rain. Elijah had the courage to pray, so Elijah saw God that day. First was Baal's team's turn, they got the sacrifice all set to burn, then prayed and begged and yearned, but no fire came, they had a lesson to learn. They danced and cried all day, no matter what they tried, it didn't work anyway, no fire was come today, there is no Baal, he couldn't hear them pray. Elijah made the call with twelve stones and wood, his altar stood tall, but then he did something odd, he wanted to make sure people knew it was God. He called some servants out, had them bring four giant water jugs out, because there was a drought, he had them soak the wood and there was no doubt. Elijah prayed that God would be known as the one true God, and God answered. Fire, fire, fire came down from heaven and burned it all up. Fire, fire, even licked up the water and dried it all up. Elijah said, King, listen now, far away I hear a rainy day kind of sound. Elijah bowed low on the ground and prayed to God to send the rainstorm down. Elijah sent a friend to spy, but no rain clouds were in the sky. He prayed and looked seven times till one tiny cloud came rolling by. God sent the king away. Elijah should have been afraid, but took a stand anyway. God made a promise to him. Elijah did to believe it, and he knew he would see it. God said, I'll make it rain. Elijah had the courage to pray, so Elijah saw God that day. Elijah saw God that day, so Elijah saw God that day. There's a great ending to a great story, but God wants you and me to pray courageously like that because we can count on God's promises. He makes them and never breaks them. Elijah prayed courageous prayers. When we follow God, our prayer makes a powerful difference. Yet another reason why we have to get this prayer request in the right hands. But to be honest, that wasn't the first time the school board said, no more field trips for Dot. And it probably won't be the last. Wee! Where are you going? I left my coffee at the hub. You can't go to the hub. Why not? Because we're making a surprise for you. A surprise? I hate surprises. Almost finished. Someone's coming. It's the whip. Hit send. But I'm not finished yet. You have to be. She's almost here. Who's almost here? No one. I mean, you. I mean, Nick was saying he was going to give you your mug, and I said, don't bother. She's almost here. And there you are. Would you like a refill? I'm fine. What are you doing here? <laughs> not looking for links. Definitely That's not. That's for sure. 
We're not. <laughs> well, I'd like for you to stay out of the hub when I'm not here. Understood? You gotta whip. <sighs> What's the request sent? If I only had a few more minutes. Children, come out of the hub, please. Man, try again later. I say we go back to plan A. I know a guy who can get us that monkey. I don't think so, Dot. Hey. Hey. <gasps> Alyssa could help us. Help you do what? Operation Powerful Prayer. We need to get a prayer request to the Quiet Time group. They could send one of their powerful prayers and help get Ray back. I already got the password and we hacked into the main computer. Whoa, wait. Nobody should be getting passwords or hacking into anything. I know you meant well, but that's not okay. That was my idea. I'm sorry. And you don't need a crazy plan. Anyone can pray courageous prayers. God gives me courage to pray with power. We could pray right now. Out loud? With each other? <laughs> yes. We can pray for each other and with each other, with confidence that God will listen. So, who wants to start? Anybody? Uh, I will. God, thank you for your promises and listening to our prayers. Hey, I'm Dot. And I'm Nick. And I'm Harper. This is a secret transmission. If you're watching this, I hope it helped you like it helped us. The Bible tells us this in the book of James. James 5.16. The prayer of a godly person is powerful. It makes things happen. When we follow God with all of our heart, our prayers make a difference. Praying courageous prayers is something Elijah did. He believed God's promises and saw miraculous things when he prayed with courage. Praying in front of others and with others is a great way to stay focused on our faith in God's promises. God makes several promises to us in His Word. We can be courageous to pray for what God wants and not what we want. Anyone can pray with courage. When we pray a courageous prayer, we're asking to see what God promised come true. Every day, I can pray because God gives me courage to pray with power. No matter what's happening around us, we can pray with courage. Ready? Three, Three two, two, one. Operation Powerful Prayer! God gives us courage to pray with power. If you've never decided to follow Jesus with your whole life, the most powerful prayer you can pray today is a prayer that says, Jesus, I want to follow you. All you have to remember are the A, B, C's. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you want to make that decision today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave. Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe and click to watch more videos. <laughs> YouTube is fun. Yeah. Have you picked something yet? You gotta click a button. I'm still waiting. Yeah, we'll be here. But, but you gotta make a decision. Now. Now. So how did you find that? Interesting, isn't it? That whip lady. Oh well. I bet you've come across people in your life that you wish they were not there. A mean teacher, a bully in your class, a mean principal, or some old lady somewhere that scares you or scares the living daylights out of you. Or your sister or brother who just always gets on your nerves and you're sure you're just a little bit closer to hurting them. I'm here to reassure you that you can make things work in your favor when you pray to God. God is always there to speak to us. We just need to sometimes pause 
and listen. So that's where you're getting your courage this week. I want you to think about it and decide that this week I'm going to pause and I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen to different alternatives to solving the problems that come my way this week. Peer pressure, um, failing grades, upset parents, having to deal with chores, being stuck in the house like forever. You know, those things that you're not even sure what next month or even next week is going to be about. It's like you've been literally stuck at home for a hundred years. But I just want you to know that this is not the time to be afraid. If your mom or your dad, you can sense fear with them, I want you to close your eyes like we are going to do now and pray for them. And pray for courage. It means that being able to face the situations at hand in spite of the fear that is looming. So let's close our eyes and pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence and the entrance of your word that gives light and understanding to the simple. I pray that today there will be courage in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray that you replace the fears in our hearts and in our spirits because your word says you haven't given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. And Lord, for us to have power, love, and sound mind, we need to be able to pray and be consistent in our prayers. Help us to build a consistent prayer life, a regular prayer life. That means sometimes we just want to talk to you and sometimes we just need to pause and listen. Help us to speak at the right time. Help us to listen at the right time. Help us to know that your ways are not our ways, neither are your thoughts our thoughts. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. All right. Just to remind you, James 5, 16b, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous makes tremendous power available. I wish you a beautiful week. You're probably rounding up for the half term or you're still, you know, deep in um, school work for the term. But I just want you to be confident in God because he who has begun a, a good work in our lives, he will be faithful to complete it. Before I close, I want to just um, sing the song I learned as a five-year-old. I know you're seven or you're eight, nine, but let me still sing it, okay? It says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love and of sound mind. He has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love and of sound mind. A sound mind means that your thoughts are checked, your emotions are in place, your acts, your will, your emotions are on point. It means you're making better choices. It means you're thinking better thoughts. It means that you're feeling healthy emotionally. It means you can regulate your emotions and you don't allow people to throw you off. You know, sometimes we're afraid and we do things out of place because of fear. It is my prayer that in this new week, no matter what circumstances you find yourself, I pray that God will direct you and he will give you a word on how to act. Have a fantastic week. God bless you. Cheers. Bye. my way. I'm going to play football with my friends and there's nothing you can- Silence! You think this is funny, eh? You can get the deadly coronavirus. The gorilla virus? No, the coronavirus. Do you know what will happen when you do? Do you? Do you? Ha! Huh, what will happen? You will bring the coronavirus home and then infect everyone. Mommy will be sick, no more jollof rice. Huh? Daddy will be sick, no more going out to see movies. Oh no! Not the movies! No! 
even worse. The government will come and take mommy and daddy away. Ah, uh, you're just making it up. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. See for yourself. Our hands with soap and water so we can prevent it from spreading. Boo! <laughs> stay home, stay safe from all of us at Ant Hill Studios.